And so first we identify the object of negation, the inherently existent self, by remembering a time when you were afraid or when you were praised or when you were criticized, a time when that feeling of I or self was very strong, where your identity seemed very clear and solid, your you-ness very present. And if you can think of a memory where you, this self or me, felt very lifted by praise or people's respect, basking in its own glory, or a time when you were criticized and felt defensiveness arise, or even as simple as nearly falling down the stairs and catching yourself, that strong feeling of I when in danger. So you're just exploring to find and then hold your sense of self. You can even repeat your own name in your head, or I, 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 me, me, me. Just allow that sense of self to arise. And it maybe feels like a hard core in the center of you or something more flexible that has gathered experiences to it. And try to sit comfortably in your meanness or in your selfhood, unchallenged. And then with one corner of your mind, like a spy, just start to say, okay, yep, you're there, no problem. I'm not confronting you. But if you are as solid as you seem, you are either the same as your parts or different to your parts. 
one with or separate from. I'm not challenging your existence. I'm just trying to become more specific. If you're there, you exist in one of two ways. One with or separate from. Does that make sense to your logic? That if it is there, this self, it should be findable in one of two ways. And still very gently, like a spy, not confronting the self's existence, just decide to take the position that the self is one with the aggregates, or the same as its parts. I am the aggregates. That makes sense. And so if I am the same as the aggregates, then I should be findable on or with each one. A self on the body as the body. A self on the mind or as the mind. All the different aspects of mind. All of them self or selves, multiple. If the I is one with the aggregates and the aggregates are plural or more than one, then I have to have many selves. Does that make sense? Are you like a herd of horses all going the same direction? Each with an identical rider or each with an identical motivation? Is feeling the same as recognition? Is mind the same as body? And so see if it makes sense to you that the I, this inherently existent core identity, it can't be multiple, so it can't be one with the aggregates or the same as the aggregates. The 
this inherently existent self is just one thing, maybe experiencing the aggregates? Oh, so then it must be separate. And so let your identity comfortably settle into the idea that you're then separate from the aggregates, different than those parts. And so then there is a self that is not the body, a self that is not the mind, separate from those two. There is body and mind, and then a third element, like a puppeteer, So look for that self that is something different than your body and mind. Is there such a thing? Is there a sixth aggregate or a boss part, self-existent, directing the others? And indeed, there is movement and choice and intention but that's just one of many mental factors dependent on other mental factors for its movement and choices. What is there separate from body and mind? different. and find the non-finding. No inherently existent self, one with the aggregates, riding along on each one, or as each one multiple. No inherently existent self separate from the aggregates, bossing and directing them, containing them. See if you can find the absence of inherent existence of that self.
And when that sense of self surges up and rises, saying, I am here, I am true and permanent and solid, just very gently say, where? Show yourself. And any self that you find is an aspect related to another aspect, related to another aspect. Each changing moment to moment, each dependently arisen. and conclude that the only self that exists is that which is merely labeled on the five aggregates, the body and mind. Merely labeled there. So subtle as if it's absent completely. But it's not no self, it's no inherently existent self. No impossible self. No permanent self. No independent self. And whenever you feel, yes, there is, say, okay, where, how, and dedicate through the power of these thoughts. May we realize the emptiness of inherent existence, cut the root of samsara, and develop our potential for full enlightenment in order to be of benefit to all living beings. Relax your attention.